Easter changes everything and I'm living proof. You know, it was the spring of 1980 and I'd just been told in a nutshell by my position coach in college that I'd never play a down of football if he had anything to say about it. And for the first time in my life, I questioned my existence and my very purpose for living. I mean, as far back as I could remember to my childhood, that's all I wanted to do was play football. It was my life's passion. It was my goal. Like I said, it was my dream of one day possibly playing in the NFL. And now suddenly it was gone. And I mean quickly. I became very frustrated and angry. And I felt completely alone. I didn't know where to turn. You know, they say that hurt people hurt people. And man, it's true. I hurt everyone in my life, especially those who are closest to me. You know, I was invited uh, by a campus pastor from Fellowship of Christian Athletes to see a movie about the life of Jesus that was being played on campus that night. And, and so I went, I went all by myself, which was kind of unusual for me to do anything alone. Uh, there was no altar call that night, but it planted a seed in my heart. Within a week or so, you know, coincidentally, I just was walking across campus and this guy was leaning against a, a handrail on the steps up to the school's library. And he yelled out to me, hey, he says, you want one? And I had no idea what it was that he was offering, but it was free and I was in college, you know how that goes. And so he tosses me this little green book, which turned out to be a Gideon's Bible. I put it in my backpack and I pulled it out later that day as I lay all alone in my apartment. I flipped through the pages and I read a few verses here and a few verses there. And for some reason, I turned to the very last page of this little green Bible. And on the back page, it said in big, bold letters, God loves you. And it got my attention and there was a Bible verse there. It said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. That was John 3, 16. Then it had more verses and it said, but God shows us his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That was from Romans 5, 8. And then it went on in bold print again. It said, all are sinners. It says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And that was from Romans chapter 3, verse 23. It had another verse still. It said, as it's written, none is righteous, no, not one, from Romans 3, 10. I understood that. Then it said in bold print again, God's remedy for sin. It says, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 6, 23. Then in yet another verse, it said, but to all who receive him, speaking of Jesus, who believed in his name, it says he gave the right to become children of God. From John chapter one, verse 12. And then what really caught my attention in bold print, it said, all may be saved. And it was another passage of scripture. It says, behold, speaking of Jesus, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I come into him and eat with him and he with me. From the book of Revelation in chapter three, verse 20. And this still yet another verse. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Romans 10, 13. And yet still another verse. It says, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. From John chapter 20, verse 31. And then it had a prayer that you could pray along. It said, pray this, God, I confess that I am a sinner and that I am in need of salvation. I believe Jesus died on the cross for my sins and rose again to bring me new life. I ask to receive you and to receive your forgiveness and your grace and choose to follow you as my Lord and my Savior. Amen. You know, I read that prayer a few times and I made it my own. And then I, I signed my name and I put my, my name and then the date that I prayed that prayer. It had a space for it there in that little green Bible. You know, as life went on though, I, I struggled. I struggled, I think, even more afterwards. And I, I knew that God was calling me to surrender my life completely to him. You know, Jesus didn't come just to be my savior. He wanted to be the Lord of my life. And I fought it for about a year. And then a year later, I ultimately surrendered my life to Jesus. I came to know a couple truths that I can sum up with these two statements. 
I didn't realize Jesus was all I needed until Jesus was all I had. And just as important, this statement, when you hit rock bottom, you will find Jesus is rock solid. You know, I was there. It was the lowest point in my life. I wanted a do-over. I didn't like what I'd become. I needed a do-over. And I, when I read these words in my Bible from 2 Corinthians 5, 17, they leaped off the page. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. I took God at his word. I received him, not just as my Savior, but the Lord of my life. You know, remember, friend, Easter changes everything. And not just for me, but for you too. I'll be praying for you. God bless.